These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. All right, well, uh, what are the transition metals? Well, we know where they're located on the periodic table. Good, yeah, so those are the ones in that, that broad middle of the table. Those are the ones that are considered the transition metals. Let's do manganese, actually. Uh, so you want us to do manganese? Yeah, let's try the electron configuration for manganese. Okay, so you guys wrote out the full electron configurations. Is that what you generally have to do? Or oftentimes you can use like a shortcut yeah, to just see what the core electrons yeah, are. Yeah, we use the noble gas. Right. Okay. So the previous noble gas here was argon. Manganese is around here. Now, this block over here is the 1, 2, 3, 4s block. So I would put two electrons in that 4s block. Um, and then, which column is manganese in in the d block? Which column is manganese in in the d block, first of all? 3d? Wait. Oh, which Just which column, column, which column is it column? Is in, the, in this block? 7. Okay. It's in the fifth place. Yeah, that's what I was oh, going for. Oh, okay. oh, and by the way, what do we call this block? Is this 1d, 2d, 3d, or? 3d. Right, 3d. There is no 1D or 2D, so we know that we start with uh, 3D for this block. Even though this is 4S, this is 3D. Now, I think we decided that manganese was in the fifth column of the D block, right? Yes. That would give it five D electrons for the D block. I think um, you had only six. So that means manganese in, is in the seventh column from the left, right? Manganese is in the seventh column from the left, which means it has to have seven electrons total. But I think what you had written down was only six electrons total, because you had a one in the S and five in the Ds. Oh, that would only give yeah. you only six total. Right. So we want to have seven total. OK. So um, that's how we can read straight off of the periodic table what the electron configuration would be for manganese. Now, I think you might have been thinking of the idea there are, there are certain transition elements that don't follow the simple patterns, where we uh, have one fewer electron in the S and one more in the D. And basically, you can just memorize those. For example, I think chromium is an example of that. It doesn't follow the simple pattern. Chromium would be AR4S1, 3D5. Chromium has, well, one, two, three, four. Chromium has six valence electrons total, because it's in the sixth column from the left total. Um, but it turns out that instead of being 4S2, 3D4, um, we only put one electron in the S block. And actually, your textbook says that at the introductory level, it's better not to even try to explain that. You just, um, just look it up. OK, so we'll just say that this happens to be an exception to the normal patterns. So I don't know if your instructor wants you to have those exceptions memorized or not, or which ones yeah, you need she, to know. She'll ask them. OK, well, there's a bunch of different ones. I, I would be surprised if you wanted all of them. But maybe she wants you to know the exceptions just, say, in the 3D block, or maybe the 4D block, yeah. or whatever she said. OK, uh, so that's a matter of memorization and going over what she said. However, if it's not an exception, you should be able to figure out the electron configuration from the periodic table, just like we did it here. Um, so yeah, since uh, we're in the seventh column total, uh, we should have to have seven valence electrons total. And the normal pattern, if it's not an exception, is to fill up the S block first and then the D. Okay, fair enough.
So we'll stick with manganese. Now, however, let's think about, I think I wanted to do manganese 2 plus. Yes. So let's try the electron configuration for manganese 2 plus. Okay, we can talk about that a little. Now, there, there's two different situations here. First, we had a neutral molecule, and then we have an ionized molecule. For the neutral molecule, we can kind of use what's called the alphabet principle, where we always try to put things in the lowest possible energy level. And how do you know who is the lowest possible energy level? For example, how would we know that 4s2, that the 4s comes before the 3d, since 4 is bigger than 3? Well, for the most part, you can read it off the periodic table. Since 4s comes before 3d in the periodic table, that's the clue, that 4s comes before 3d. So we should use the periodic table to remind us of as many things as possible. But unfortunately, it turns out that those energy levels only apply to neutral um, um, species. The um, order for the electrons for ionization is different. Probably the best thing to do is to imagine making the neutral species and then taking electrons away. Well, where do you take the electrons away from when you're ionizing? You take the electrons from the valence P then the valence S then the valence D then the valence F shells. And this is just another rule that we'll memorize. So we'll just memorize this. So the point here is we can't just use the periodic table to tell us how to make the ions. The periodic table really only gives us the right answers for neutral species. So if I start with this manganese, now I need to take away two electrons, because this is two plus. Well, I want to start by taking electrons from the valence P shell. Well, there is no valence P shell in this case, because um, the, the, uh, we didn't get all the way over to here. We do have P, P electrons, but those are core electrons. Well, we're not going to take those away unless we're really forced to. That's really going to come up. So there is no valence P electrons for this particular species. And generally, there won't be valence P if you're working with the transition metals. So that was just in here for completeness. For transition metals, the whole point of being a transition metal is you haven't made it to the P block. All right, so the next electrons we take are from the S block not from the D block, even though the periodic table would seem to suggest the other way around. So I'm going to take these two electrons out of the S block, um, and then we're done. That leaves me these five electrons in the D block. OK, so I think that um, your first instinct here was to take the electrons from the D block, and then I think you were maybe remembering that maybe that doesn't apply. OK, so we just have to learn ionization rules separately from neutral molecule rules. All right, so this would be ionization. There would be a good chance that you would see this. Uh, and that, this is important for the rest of the chapter anyway.